Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. Today I have a week of our dinners to share with you. To be honest, we didn't try anything new this week. Lots of old favorites that I haven't made in a while though, so hopefully you guys will get some new ideas. Those of you that haven't been here for very long, those of you that have been here forever have seen most of the stuff already before. Um, but all of it is stuff that we really like and pretty much stuff that's really easy to make. I kept things pretty simple this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. Starting off on Friday night, we had Mississippi Pot Roast. If you've been here for like any amount of time, you know that we love Mississippi Pot Roast. It's something we make pretty regularly, especially during like the fall and winter. It's one of our go-to crock pot meals. So I'm not gonna walk you through all the steps, but everything will be listed out down below. I love to do it with potatoes and carrots. I know not everybody adds vegetables, but we love the vegetables in it. And then I also like to serve it with some white rice and a video on how I do that will be linked down below as well. Saturday night, we had a one pot lasagna, like hamburger helper style meal. This is one of those like homemade hamburger helper recipes that I just kind of made up. So I'm starting off here with one pound of ground beef. You can season it however you like. I like to do garlic powder, onion salt, some red pepper flakes, pepper and Italian seasoning and just cook that up until it's fully browned and then if you have a lot of excess grease go ahead and drain that. Then I'm going to add in two teaspoons of the Knorr beef bouillon powder and two cups of water or you could just do beef broth if you prefer and then a 24 ounce jar of marinara sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of water to that jar to make sure I get it all out and give that a good stir and then you're going to want to add in eight ounces of pasta. So if you really want it to be like hamburger helper you'd want to buy mafalda pasta which can be really hard to find. So if you can't find that just any kind of pasta will really do in this or you could do what I did which is break up some lasagna noodles into little pieces and do about eight ounces. I had like some of a box left from when I had made lasagna previously so I just added that in there and then you want to bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil you want to reduce the heat to like a medium low and cover and let this simmer for about 15 minutes or until your pasta is done. Because I was using those like bigger pieces of broken up lasagna I did go through and like stir this a couple times in the middle just to make sure that they weren't sticking to Together. and then I just continued cooking it until they were tender and most of that liquid was absorbed. Then you can stir in three quarters of a cup of blended up cottage cheese or you could do ricotta if you prefer ricotta and then also one to two cups of mozzarella cheese. I really prefer the cottage cheese I don't know why, but I just take an immersion blender to it and it gets like almost the same consistency as ricotta, not quite as thick, a little bit more creamy and we really like it and makes it taste really good. That's what I use in my lasagna all the time anyways, so it makes it more like my lasagna and just give everything a good stir and then this is ready to serve. And I did this with some salad on the side. Of course, Lily is no lettuce, so she's got her fresh veggies on the side. This is probably the third or fourth time I've made the, this recipe, and we love it. Sunday was St. Patrick's Day, and our tradition for the past couple of years is for me to make a shepherd's pie. So I'm starting off by making my mashed potatoes. I didn't have any leftovers in the freezer, which is what I would usually use for this, but I needed to make some, so I make them in the Instant Pot. I've just got about a cup of water in the bottom of the Instant Pot, then the little trivet, and then I did like six pretty good sized potatoes, peeled and cut into quarters, and then sprinkle them with some salt, Put the lid on the instant pot set it to manual high pressure for 12 minutes after the 12 minutes i did a quick release and let all that steam out and then you can just go in and remove the little trivet and start mashing up the potatoes no need to drain it it makes the creamiest mashed potatoes so mash them all up and then i add in some butter and some milk and some salt and some pepper until i get it kind of tasting how I want and to the right consistency and this is what I do anytime I make mashed potatoes sometimes I'll add like garlic or garlic butter sometimes sour cream um, but 
this is pretty much the base and then I can go from here. And the only other things that I do different to make it for shepherd's pie is I add in some parsley and I add in some Parmesan cheese. Now moving on to my meat, I've got one pound of ground lamb here and I'm seasoning it up with a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion salt. And I'm just gonna cook that up until it is fully browned. If you don't like ground lamb or you're unsure, you can do this with ground beef. Technically it's not a shepherd's pie then, it's a cottage pie. Then once the meat is fully cooked, I'm going to add in some minced garlic. You could do fresh minced garlic, but I had these little frozen cubes, so I just added that in there and continued to cook for about another minute. Then I'm going to add in one cup of beef broth, or you could do water and nor beef bouillon like I did, half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one package of Lipton onion soup mix, and give that all a good stir. And then you could do frozen veggies like the original recipe says, or I like canned veggies. So I usually either do mixed veggies or this time I just did a can of drained peas and carrots. Then I turn that off and let it sit for a few minutes while I finish up my potatoes. And then this time I sprinkled it with some cheddar cheese because my family likes it really cheesy. So I did some cheese and then I just put my mashed potatoes on top. I will say I made too many mashed potatoes. I even had some leftover that I didn't even put in this, but I definitely put too many mashed potatoes on here. It was a little much. But I got my mashed potatoes on there and then I took a fork and like made kind of like ridges in there so it gets nice and crispy on top. And then I put this in the oven on 350 for 40 minutes. Then I let it sit for five to 10 minutes to kind of cool and set up and then we just serve it up and it's everything you need for a meal in one dish and it is delicious. Monday night we had this sheet pan balsamic chicken and veggies. I have made this before. So I'm starting off here by mixing together half a cup of some Italian dressing and six tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. I'm going to whisk that together really well and then I'm going to take about a third of that and pour it over some chicken tenders that I have and then you can just let those marinate in the fridge for 30 minutes or like all day however long you want to marinate them for. I did very short marinade because I forgot that you could marinate the chicken and didn't look at the recipe until like 4 30 so it didn't marinate mine for very long but while my chicken was marinating then I got my veggies on my sheet pan I did a foil line sheet pan just because it makes cleanup easier and I'm adding on some red onion which was new for us usually I just do the broccoli that the recipe calls for baby carrots cut in half and some grape tomatoes but this time I had red onion from some recipes last week so I added that on as well and then I drizzled it with some olive oil and seasoned everything with some salt and pepper garlic powder and Italian seasoning and then I put the veggies in the oven for 10 minutes on 400 degrees after the 10 minutes, then I went and tossed the veggies and moved them over to one side of the pan because we're going to add on our chicken. Just add the chicken to one side. And then that remaining like marinade that we made, I'm going to drizzle over or spread onto the chicken. If you plan to use some of this for dipping, you want to set that aside because you don't want to be like brushing chicken juices into like all of the stuff if you plan on eating some so if you plan on saving some for the end like the recipe calls make sure you don't mix that with the chicken because that would be gross so i don't do that because i have balsamic glaze but just thinking ahead if you do plan to do that i pretty much use all of it on the chicken now i had a little bit left over that didn't seem like it needed so that kind of went to waste I probably made a little bit too much but then you just put this back in the oven and cook it for another 15 to 20 minutes until your chicken is done and your veggies are tender typically I'll serve this over rice or like some couscous or something didn't feel like that this time so we just had our chicken and veggies with some garlic bread and I'm the only one who likes the balsamic glaze so I drizzled mine with some of that balsamic glaze I just picked it up at Aldi I think last year and it's delicious Tuesday night I made some barbecue pulled pork in the crock pot so I've got this really big pork butt here in my crock pot it's a bone-in 
pork butt and it's got a big like fat cap on one side so first I'm seasoning the side without the fat cap with some barbecue seasoning from Trader Joe's salt pepper garlic powder and paprika and then I'm going to turn it over and have the fat cap up so it can cook that way and I'm going to season it the same way on that side and then I'm going to put about a half a cup of apple cider vinegar in the bottom of the crock pot and then drizzle on whatever barbecue sauce you like on the top of this I think the one I have is like Williamson Brothers or something like a Carolina gold barbecue sauce I think that's what it is uh, so I put that all over the top put a lid on this and let it cook on high because I didn't get this started until like 11 a.m. so I needed to do it on high but I let it cook until like 7 p.m. on high and everything got nice and tender so I'm going in and I'm removing any bits of fat first because like nobody wants a big chunk of fat in their barbecue pulled pork sandwich so remove those big pieces of fat and then there was a lot of liquid in this so I took a ladle and spooned off a lot of it but kind of kept it to the side in case I did need to add it back later but there was so much I didn't so just get rid of that and then I also had a bone in here so I removed that and then my camera cut out just as I started to shred it up but then I shredded this up and you'll see like I didn't have to remove all of the liquid but once you shred it up it starts to like kind of soak that up and it makes it so juicy and delicious and then you can add more barbecue sauce to your sandwiches that's what i typically do kind of leave it plain in the crock pot and then add more barbecue sauce on your sandwich so the kids have some sandwiches here Andy and I weren't ready to eat at the at the time that it was ready and the kids are ready to eat so they have some American cheese on their sandwich and then some fresh veggies on the side and then some Cheetos mac and cheese and Andy and I's plates looked pretty similar I don't do cheese on my pulled pork sandwiches though just some extra barbecue sauce and then some mac and cheese and some fresh veggies Wednesday night we had this crispy bayou style tilapia and like roasted potatoes and then a salad on the side. This recipe originally came from HelloFresh. I never actually got it in a box, but I found the recipe on their website. If you didn't know, that's one of the places that I like to look for recipes sometimes. I used to do it all the time, but this is one that I've made over and over again. We love I will try to find a video of me making it and link it down below, but if I can't at least find that, I will link the HelloFresh recipe. It's delicious and I wanted to show it to you step by step this week, but it was either don't film me cooking or don't make dinner at all because I was just like so tired and it had been a long day and just homeschool and everything was kicking my butt this day. So I just got the clips of the finished product for you this week. And finally, for the last meal of our week, we had orange chicken and fried rice. This is just the Trader Joe's orange chicken. I make a bag and a half and I cook the chicken in the air fryer and then I make my own fried rice. I knew this day was going to be a very long day so I knew I wanted something easy. We had a homeschool field trip in the morning and then we went straight from there. We got some lunch and went to our friend's house for our like weekly play date. And yeah, it was a long day. Didn't get home until 5.30. So this was something quick and easy that I could throw together and know that everybody would be happy with it. But that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that y'all got some new meal ideas. If you did, let me know what you plan on trying in the comments down below. And if you made it here all the way to the end, make sure you leave me a smiley face in the comments as well. I hope y'all have a great rest of your weekend and a great upcoming week. And I will see y'all on the next one. Bye.